Okay, this is Duncan Fuller and this is tutorial book eight for beginners. Um, it's a little bit fiddly this tutorial, so what I'm going to do rather than uh, model it um, as I would normally, I'm just going to talk you through the model itself and relate it to the tutorial, so hopefully it'll make sense. Uh, so the scenario is um, we've got a, a source, a queue, processor second queue and a storage area rack so they're feeding each other using an a key so it's going from left to right and uh, that shouldn't be uh, much of a problem for you guys uh, we've now created three areas uh, some chairs here a, a shape here that's going to represent a meeting room and a shape here that's going to represent a, um, a maintenance department we have a three transports, an operator uh, who's going to transport objects from Q1 to the processor. Uh, we've got the transporter down here who's going to batch operate, uh, taking 25 obs from the Q2 to the, um, to the rack. And then what we've got is a maintenance guy. And what's going to happen is at nine o'clock every day, this operator is going to have to go to a meeting. So it goes off to the meeting area. And this is a perfect time for uh, getting uh, our maintenance person to come and do a scheduled maintenance here. And then at um, the end of a shift, both the operator, uh, operator one and the operator maintenance will go to the chairs, which is representing wherever they want to go home or cafe and stuff. Um, and that's similar at uh, dinner time as well. So it's more of a scheduling issue. So uh, we're going to bring on all the objects. We're going to connect them up like this. Uh, we're going to change the source. Um, the source, uh, we're going to have a, a, an arrival schedule. Uh, we're going to get 43 boxes to be created at the beginning of the shift. 144 me, uh, represents um, a day of, in minutes. And it's going to repeat every day. OK. Um, and we're going to get uh, the uh, set both queues to, um, uh, to transport because we're going to get the, this queue to use operator one to transport and we're going to get the, the second queue to use the transporter. The difference with the second um, queue is we're going to ask it to perform something called a perform, perform batching. So it will only request a transporter after it's got 25 boxes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at timetables and we're going to, uh, so this is an example of the first timetable members, uh, who who's, who is affected by this timetable. So this is a meeting. So we know that only the operator one goes to that meeting. So in the meetings tab will be operator one. And then in the table, you can see nine, uh, nine o'clock here. When you drag the box, it can be a bit bitty and stuff uh, you can change it with the start and end uh, icons down here um, it's colored red uh, I think that comes from the down downstairs idle being a red icon and stuff if you click on these drop downs you'll be able to change the color and stuff it's only a, rep uh, a visual thing um, and we do this for the several times um, We've even got a timetable for the maintenance. And what this does, the member is actually the processor one. And what happens is on downtown, we stop input ports. So at nine o'clock, processor one will stop the input port. At 9.45, it will resume the input port. And so we have a similar sort of uh, timetable here as we would have for, for the processor. And for operators one and two, this is their shift pattern. So uh, they start at what looks like eight o'clock, have an, um, an hour break in the day, and then we, they finish at five o'clock. Okay, uh, let's uh, go to Flexim and talk you through the model. Okay, this is uh, Flexim 2020. Um, like I said, I was going to model it like I normally do, but I think it, it was again a bit bitty with creating all the timetables and stuff. Hopefully you're okay with the um, things. We've got a source and it's got the re repeat schedule every uh, 24 hours. Uh, nothing, uh, anyth anything else in the, the floors, tri triggers and stuff. It's just going to create one flow item and send it to uh, the cube one. Q 
one um he's just got floor using a center port connection so we've got a center port connection between q1 and operator one um and it's got nothing on labels and stuff so let's go to the q2 which is this one here again um it's got a floor with a center port connection and we've center port connected for q2 to the transporter but what we've done differently here is uh, we selected the batch and so what's going to happen is every time there's 25 bo boxes there this transporter will come and be called and it will take them to the the rack processor one leaving uh, to the default settings here no breakdowns floor is just first available because it's, it's only going straight to Q, Q2 and nothing else and uh, the, the chairs they come from um, right down at the bottom if you expand well, where are we the people's section there's a little bit more and we have um locations and multiple locations so uh, it comes from multiple locations it's just an object that i'm going to use and um, to represent when they're not not um, at work and i've also used a shape to represent uh, the meeting area and the ma maintenance area i've left that to be it's not the best name chairs uh, but I've, I've renamed the uh, meeting area from sh shape one i think it defaults to to meeting area and stuff uh, I've got the uh, two operators and stuff. So um, let's uh, look at the table. So you go to the tools, click on the drop down and timetable. And I have created uh, several timetables here. So let's look at the meeting. So this is a meeting one. It's just got operator one. So this operator, I could use the thumbnail I drop type thing or I can click on there to get get the operator the function basically says uh, I'm using the travel to object delay until downtime complete feature so if I click on there the, uh, the bottom one and I want I want it to go to an object and I've used the eye drop and I selected the meeting room uh, so when when it's downtime, go to the meeting room, and when um, it's not downtime, it must resume and carry on with what it's doing. So the the table, of, uh, make sure you change it to uh, weekly repeat, and I've drawn a box in here to change it to red. Um, probably I should do uh, change uh, Saturday and Sunday to full off, but uh, the it gets overwritten by it, the fact that they go to the um, the chairs later on, which hopefully makes sense in a minute. And there, it's currently set as idle time. Uh, so actually it's currently red, sorry, it's currently set as schedule time. And you get different uh, options um, if, you, if you want to change it. Don't know, uh, is there a meeting mixed? stand clear there no okay, so that, so that's the first one so this is this going to a meeting the maintenance is a processor so I want this to basically break down uh, or stop working should I say um, and I want that to stop down stop working at the same time so I have a uh, just click on that so I've changed it to state 33 uh, you, it's only a visual thing there but basically if it's that color you know that it's a scheduled maintenance and so at nine o'clock till uh, nine o'clock till 9:45, it's going to do whatever it says in the function and then the functions are put in down function is stop input and then uh, resume function is resume input and then all I've done is um, select the color to be red uh, and then green when it, it starts up again. So that so that that should stop and get a yellow band around it and stuff. 
but what it's not doing it's not calling the uh, the operator yet so I've got this operator um, again I've selected it using the eyedrop and I've put it down here as uh, schedule maintenance click on there so it's maintenance and it's uh, at the same time as the processor so it's going to go over to the processor and again what happens when it's down and I've asked it to travel to processor one and when it's not down it's resumed what it was doing which is uh, going to there and this is slightly different because in the operator I've got a triggers which tells the operator um, when it's not being called to do anything else such as do maintenance on processor one go to uh, maintenance department so that it's working in this department now and uh, so when it's not doing anything else go here if we didn't do that what it would do it to, to, to just come along stand next to the processor for the first time and then it'd never go anywhere wouldn't do anything but it's just nice to see him walk walk away um, and then we've got timetable which is both the two uh, operators um, travel to object and I've got him traveling to the chairs which is basically a representative going on and you can see that um, the, the shift pattern is uh, eight or eight or five so I see it working so it's resume uh, run you can see the operator's gone there then at nine o'clock it's a bit fast so let's just slow it down a bit so reset run starts at eight o'clock um, let's get it close to nine o'clock so we're going to 9.40 and uh, so it's carrying the up boxes from here 43 was created at the beginning of the shift um, so it's just carry on and when it gets to nine o'clock he should go there processors should switch off the input and the maintenance person should come along so there you go so you can see it's gone uh, yellow and he's, uh, there's no more input he could have ignored that because in truth there's no more inputs because he's not transporting anyway so it doesn't really matter um, and then eventually come uh, 940 when he comes back from his meeting things should kick off so he's moved away but you've got another 15 minutes when he comes and what's really nice is when uh, we can get to some of the looks just, just click on that bottom so we're on 12 let's just crank it up a bit so it's getting nearer to 25 there we go and he's done one shift so he's moved here and it's going to uh, is he going to get all of all 43 so he doesn't get all 43 done um, by the time he's gone home and uh, we carry on we'll do it speed it up uh, so it's through the night coming back at eight o'clock here we go and he carries on we get another batch of 43 so it looks as though if we carry on with this and he goes home we've got two so we're getting 43 boxes delivered every day and he's only managing to do 42 interestingly the um uh the um transport is carrying 25 and so he's used uh some once some days and twice other days depending on how it's going um, okay uh, hopefully that was useful to you guys and um, quite a nice little scheduling problem stuff um, uh, this is something you could do with multiple uh, tables and stuff and see if you need to schedule uh, different workers uh, on different days what's happening here by the way we've gone into the weekend and uh, I've just scheduled to deliver it every day and it's delivering on, on Saturdays and sun, Saturdays and Sundays uh, and this poor guy uh, these two guys are not working on Saturdays and Sundays so it's building up a bit so uh, uh, that's maybe something you could uh, work out how to uh, change and uh, hopefully that was useful to you guys uh, thanks a lot for listening